while we accept a slower growth trajectory, we aim to create quality growth and to create higher value jobs for Singaporeans. For example, in a tight labour market with limited resources, there will, of course, be some opportunities that we may have to forego. The second downside risk is the risk of rising structural inflation and rising business costs given the very tight labour market. We are very mindful of all these risks, especially not to allow runaway inflation or wage price spiral to gain traction. Therefore, the wage credit scheme, which was announced during the budget statement, will help the companies defray some of these wage increases and which will then prevent them from being entirely passed on to the consumer. In addition, we expect the subdued state of the global economy to weigh on overall demand, and this may help contain inflation in the near term. But over the long term, productivity improvements arising from our current restructuring should help to prevent higher costs from fueling strong price increases. The government has therefore adopted a multi-pronged approach to manage inflation and will continue to watch the developments very closely. We are also introducing the Technology Adoption Programme, TAP, to make technology enhancement more accessible to companies, particularly SMEs, a point that Ms. Jessica Tan and other members have stressed. Through this $51 million programme, managed by ASTAR, we will introduce a team of experienced intermediaries to link companies up with the solution providers from the public and private sectors who can best meet their productivity needs. We will pilot this program in six sectors. There's a question of which sectors and how would we apply them. And specifically, they are in construction, food manufacturing, precision engineering, marine, aerospace, and retail. These have good potential to harness technology to enhance productivity. Companies in, this, in these sectors can use producti productivity and innovation credit, the PIC scheme, to offset their costs of adopting the technologies. And we're fully aware of the need to help them and how SMEs succeed, even to survive in these difficult times in the economic uncertainties. So Spring IE Singapore have been working hard over the years to look at the different schemes, rolling out the different programs to help our SMEs. And as more companies anchor their R&D facilities here, they also create high-value jobs for Singaporeans. Our total R&D manpower, including researchers, postgraduate students, technicians, and support staff, grew by 4% from 43,000 in 2010 to nearly 45,000 in 2011. 